In today's lab, we're going to cover the bone tool. So the bone tool is a really, really useful tool for animation. It allows us to create IK inverse kinematic animations. And I'm going to start by showing you exactly how it works. So uh, a pretty cool example, I think, anyway, is creating a stick figure. So what I'm going to do is simply just draw in a stick figure. Now, the one thing to keep in mind is it will not apply to a stroke color. So you can't use the pencil tool. The bone tool will not work. In fact, it'll give you a error message saying IK bone cannot be applied to stroke. So that's out of the question, but you can use it on the brush tool. So I'm going to start by using the brush tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm really just going to uh, build a really straightforward sort of stick figure. And I'm just going to go ahead and I could even create the head like this. And then just make sure that you delete the outline. So I've got my character, the head started anyway. Just go ahead and bring this up. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab my brush tool. And I'm going to bring the brush tool smaller. And I'm going to start to just sort of draw this guy in. And I find it best to sort of create little angles where he might have his elbows, but and which way you want to bend them. In this demo, let's just do that like this, though. So let's go here, here, and here. So using the bone tool, you can even do little feet and maybe a little hand, <laughs> like so. All right. Now I'm going to grab the bone tool and what I'm going to do is simply start right here from the root and I'm going to click and drag and I'm going to release it around the midpoint then I'm going to click and hold and drag and release again. So this one, this way he'll have one bend at the spine. Now from here I'm going to go and do the arm and that should do it and then this one that elbow and I'm not gonna bother with the wrist he's just got like these big mitten hands and I'll do one at the neck and then I'll do one at the top of the head that's alright and then I'll go here one for the knee the ankle and the foot and same thing here knee ankle now in order to animate it, one of the first things I want to show you is that once you bind, you, you use your, your bone tool to bind this together, it creates a new layer called armature. Now armature, I'm just going to call this stick figure. An armature is sort of like a, an interior skeleton to any kind of puppet basically. And that's exactly what we've done, except in this case, we've done it digitally. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this selection tool, and I'm going to start. I need frames to animate, first off. So I'm going to insert. I can insert frame. And then you s notice that insert pose, because now we're actually going to be working in poses. So we can pose this character up. So I'm going to say, like, frame every 10 frames, I'm going to create a new pose. And I'm going to just start to bend this guy around. And you'll notice it works pretty well. And you'll notice at other times that it doesn't work pretty well. So depending on your art and your person and how well it bound to the character will depend on whether it works well or not. And you'll see I'm getting some weird deformation in here, but I mean, for the most part, this is actually a really great bind. I've seen far, far, far worse. So I'm going to go ahead here. And it works as an inverse 
kinematic. So you, I'm grabbing it here, and it's working its way outward. Forward kinematics would be from the shoulder down. So I would like rotate the shoulder, but this works in an inverse way. And then I can always grab the head too. And there we go. So now my character goes whoop, whoop. And I'm getting some weird little deformation in there. Nothing I can really do about it. Um, you can try using this bind tool, and I never seem to think it actually works right. So I really, I'm really happy with this particular bind, so I don't want to mess with it. But the way it does work is really weird. And you can start to have it adjust other different points, and you can see where it's bound. So this one is bound there and then you click on here and I'm just using this bind tool you can see this one's only affecting this joint and then you could say like I want this one to affect here but that's not gonna do any good so I'm gonna keep it on this one so you can click and drag and have it each one to which joint you want it to be affected by but this bind is actually superb so at the moment I don't really see any need to adjust it, but that's how you do adjust it. And generally, if you don't get a good bind, nine times out of ten, you're just going to want to redo it. So, here we go. Whoa! <laughs> I'm going to undo that one. And... Maybe he's doing something like that. I don't know. So then I can go out to frame 20, and it automatically creates these key poses. And I'm going to go ahead and do something different. And I'm just wiggling him around. So you get the point. Whoop, whoop. It's like he's dancing or something. So that is how the bind tool or the bone tool works. Um, not too much effort to it. I'm just clicking around and dragging these poses around. And you can literally just sort of animate however. So this is how you get started with the bone tool. The bone tool can be used for many, many other things. But we're going to cover that in the following lab. So I hope you found this useful. I want you to go ahead and do uh, try it out, mess around with it, and create a whole bunch of different kinds of poses. And um, if you have any questions, just go ahead and inbox me. But for the most part, there's no uh, kind of tricks to this one, um, just pretty straightforward. So that is the bone tool, and if you do, again, if you do have any questions, message me, but um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this lab. If you like the video, please subscribe and click on the like button. Also share on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And check the description for more video and amazing offer on animation book.